Hello again. Today we're going to be talking about how to find the area between a curve and the y-axis. Up until now we've been talking about the area between a curve and the x-axis. So now this is a slightly different problem, but it's certainly one that we're able to do. Um, so we've done this. We figured out the area between a curve and the x-axis, but what if that switches? So now I need the area between the curve and the y-axis. So if I know the function y equals f of x, um, and if I know that that function has an inverse, then I can rewrite the function as x equals f inverse of y. So now y is the independent variable and x is the dependent variable. And I can find the area between two y values, c and d, instead of two x values, a and b. So I'm going to integrate in terms of y uh, with respect to y from y equals c to y equals d, that function f inverse. Okay. If uh, the curve is to the right of the y-axis, then I will just take the positive antiderivative, uh, just like I did when the curve was above the x-axis. And then if the curve is to the left of the y-axis, then I will take the opposite of the antiderivative, just like I did when the curve was below the x-axis and I was integrating in terms of x. All right, so that process is the same. It's just we're doing left, right instead of top, bottom. So here's an example. I have a function f of x equals the square root of x minus 1, and I am finding the area between that curve and the y-axis from y equals 1 to y equals 3. So it's kind of nice they gave me the y values there. Sometimes they give me the x values, but um, you would use the function to figure out what those y values were. So I need to find the inverse of f first uh, so that I can take the antiderivative of it. It needs to be in terms of y because my endpoints are y values. So if I have y equals the square root of x minus 1, I can square both sides to get y squared equals x minus 1 and then add 1 to both sides to get that x equals y squared plus 1. That curve is completely on the right-hand side of the y-axis, so I can find the positive antiderivative of that function. So I'm finding the antiderivative of y squared plus 1 from y equals 1 to y equals 3. All right, so the antiderivative of y squared is 1 third y cubed. The antiderivative of 1 is just y. I plug in 3, I plug in 1, and those are the values I get. And so my answer is going to be 32 over 3. So that's the area between that curve and the y-axis. Okay, here's another example. Let's suppose I have f of x equals the natural logarithm of 1 minus x, and um, the other boundary is going to be the y-axis, and I am evaluating from 0 to 1. I want the area from y equals 0 to y equals 1, and that is what's shaded in the picture. So first I need to find the inverse of my function, just like I did. So if y is the natural logarithm of 1 minus x, then e to the y is going to be 1 minus x, and I can solve that to get that x equals 1 minus e to the y. The curve is completely on the left-hand side of the y-axis, so the area is going to be the negative antiderivative of the function. So I'm going to find the negative antiderivative of 1 minus e to the y from y equals 0 to y equals 1. The antiderivative of 1 is y, and the antiderivative of e to the y is e to the y. So I plug in 1 and 0 into that, and I simplify, and I uh, take the opposite so that I will get uh, a total area of that green section to be e minus 2. All right, so that's the process of finding the area between a curve and the y-axis. Uh, so if you have any questions about that, please let me know, and I will see you tomorrow.